This video is on domain and range. I'm going to be doing the example three, a continuous graph that has two arrows. So it doesn't actually have two, it doesn't have an, a true endpoint because it actually, it has two arrows on it. So we're going to be using the color coding uh, for the domain and the range. I'm gonna be using blue to help me with the domain and pink to help me with the range. So for the domain, I want to highlight the point that's farthest to the left. So if I look over here on the left, I have an arrow that's going to point to the left. So since it's pointing to the left, it's going to keep going. So I'm going to highlight the arrow in this case. For the right-hand side, as I move, go to my graph, my right-hand side actually hits an arrow again. So I'm going to highlight the arrow for the right-hand side. The arrow represents an infinity. It will keep going to the left-hand side forever, and that goes into the negative values of the x's. So my domain will have a negative infinity for this arrow. On the right-hand side, this arrow represents an infinity, and since it's on the positive values of the x's, it will go to a positive infinity. This is for our domain. So our domain will be written in interval notation as negative infinity to positive infinity. This is a continuous graph because I can go from this blue along the graph to the other blue without having to pick up my blue pin. So I can make sure that I have negative infinity comma positive infinity for my domain. And again, infinities can never be reached so we're going to have open brackets. So the interval notation for domain will be written as open bracket, negative infinity, comma, positive infinity, open bracket. We also want to write set notation. So I'm going to write set notation just up here. I'm going to have my open squiggle, x such that. Now, since there are no endpoints, uh, can, I don't have to have uh, two numbers. I don't have two endpoints, so I won't have two numbers. So I won't have two inequalities. I'll go ahead and put my letter X, and then I'll finish the rest of it. Because our interval notation were the infinities, it's going to go left forever and right forever. That means that all of the X values will be used. That means that all real values of X are possible. I cannot write out every x value that's possible. So what that means is our x's are going to be an element of all real numbers. All real x values are possible. So I write all real numbers as this fancy r. This just represents all real numbers. All x values can be used. This happens when I have negative infinity and positive infinity because there's no gap. Every single x value will be used. For the range, I'm going to again do my pink for the range. I need the point that is the lowest point on the graph. If I'm looking from the bottom going up to the top, this is the first point that we come to. Then as I keep going to the top, I end up reaching to the arrows. So both of these arrows are pointing in the same direction. I can highlight one of the arrows and say that that's my highest point because both of these are going to the same location. With that being said, my smallest point, that Y value is going to be a zero. For my highest point, because it's an arrow pointing up, that arrow pointing up will give me a positive infinity. Our range in interval notation starts with the zero and it will go to that positive infinity. And if I go from pink to pink, I do not have to pick up my pencil or anything, so that means that it is a continuous graph. We can write our range in interval notation as zero to positive infinity. It will be closed at the zero because it actually touches that coordinate. But again, infinity cannot be reached, so it'll be an open bracket. 
So instead of it being negative infinity to infinity like our domain was, it'll be zero to positive infinity because this parabola does have a starting point. It does not go down forever, but it will go up forever. For our interval notation, close bracket, zero, comma, positive infinity, open bracket. Our set notation, I'm gonna write it here. My swivel bracket, I'm gonna have my y's such that. Since we, again, do not have two endpoints, I can put the y value first, and then I can determine what I need. This will not be all real numbers like the domain was, because I do have none of the negative y values. That means it has to be bigger or smaller than something. Since we're going to the positive infinities, we're going to have all the numbers that are bigger than zero, because we want positive values. So we want that greater than, and we can have that equal to aspect because it is closed. So we want greater than or equal to zero. And that's the end of our range. One other note, because there were two arrows on here, if one of the arrows were pointing up and down, so if one of the arrows were pointing up and one of the arrows were pointing down, then the range would also be all row numbers. Because we had the arrows both pointing up, because the arrows were both pointing up, the range started at a value and then went up forever. If this arrow had been pointing down, the domain would have stayed the same because this arrow would have been pointing down and to the left. So the left, it would have still been touched, just like this one says. But it would have also been pointing down, so it would have reached that negative infinity as well. This is a quadratic. Quadratics can only go either both arrows will be pointing up or both arrows will be pointing down. A cubic function will have one arrow pointing down and one arrow pointing up. So you will see the domain and range being all row numbers for cubic functions. So again, I'm using my blue to help me know which one goes for my domain. I highlight my leftmost point and my rightmost point and I find the x values of that. Then for the range, I highlight my lowest point on the graph and then my highest point on the graph and I write out the y value of those points. So then I can find my interval notation.